Right, here we are. I will try and take stones of stage here. It is right. I've actually got a screed here, which I will read. Um, first of all, huge welcome to this rather unusual circumstances. Um, I want to say that this is a pilot. It is an experiment. And I have every sympathy if any presenter has trouble with the technology and I applaud them for trying. And I thank them for taking the time to learn as well as prepare. Indeed, this is a novel experience for most of us. I thank you all for joining us. We are all pioneers. I'm looking forward to learning more about the various aspects of natural dice and in the field, as I hope you are. I also hope that you are already finding the experience fun, if a little frustrating at times. If, like many practitioners, be they artist or scientist, who are much more accustomed to being hands-on in a studio or lab, the virtual world seem, scene must seem very odd or unnatural. But consider, supposing you cannot attend any conferences for one or more reasons, reasons such as lack of funds, poor health, prejudice of other participants, real or feared, pandemic limitations these days, or any other physical or mental barrier, then I hope you will see why we are playing with electronic puppetry here. We are all real people behind the cartoonish avatars. I hope you will all take the opportunity to get to know at least a few people in the die scene here today, and those that you don't already know. Okay, let's see where we're at. Okay, as ever, a few tips or housekeeping rules. Please keep your microphones muted unless you are speaking or chatting in a private zone. When we're in the conference hall here, the chair will be able to mute everyone who is not on the platform, which is what I've done. At question times, please send questions to me by private message. Forward slash PM and then my name. I can then pick out any questions which are frequently asked or are particularly interesting and put them to the presenter. Make sure your cursor is in the correct box. A very common and sometimes embarrassing error. Non-native speakers of English, if you're stuck for a word or two, you can use a translator in another window, another program, and copy the result into the private message box. You could send me the questions at any time during the talks, not just afterwards. Again, make sure you type in the private box. Useful to turn off the mic when you get a coughing fit there. Right, we have our first keynote speaker. Dr. Rika Reissinen, and she is the principal investigator and leader of the BioColor Research Programme. We're going from 2019 to 2025 at the University of Helsinki. Her main research interest has been in natural colorants since her master's thesis in craft studies at the University of Helsinki. But she has a multidisciplinary background. Having started her studies with chemistry and natural sciences and combined them with textiles and education. Her PhD thesis about fungal colorants as textile dyes was completed in 2002. After that, she has published numerous scientific articles about natural colorants and books such as Dyes from Nature, which was published in 2016 in both English and Finnish. She also has a strong background as an educator working as a senior lecturer on, in the H University of Helsinki program of craft studies and craft teacher education. And I noted quite early in her career, she won a silver medal from the Society of Dyers and Colorists, mentioned here because the SDC will feature in a later presentation. Welcome, Rika. Thank you, Jenny. And uh, thank you very much that you have um, uh, uh, put up this, this really interesting conference and it it is really nice to be here and uh, tell something about our biocolor project that we have been running one year now so i will turn around to see see my slides and um if you uh, have any questions so then you can uh, set those questions to Jenny. 
Ginny and we can talk about them later. So in, in my presentation, I will introduce our biocolor uh, project, bio-based dyes and pigments for color palette, which is uh, uh, run and le led by uh, the University of Helsinki and I'm the, the leader of the project. So Jenny actually told uh, something about my, my background already, but um, I have been always interested in colors. And I started my my studies at the university with chemistry. And uh, in those studies, I already made thesis about red metal complexes. In craft craft um, studies, after after chemistry, I I kind of wanted something more practical, and um, I studied craft studies. And uh, I studied, uh, started uh, the research on traditional Finnish dyeing recipes. I went to the dye workshop and I was wondering very much why these uh, amounts of mordants have so big variation that in, in some uh, recipes you use only 5% of the weight of the fiber and in other recipe 25% the weight of the fiber. So uh, also the sustainable and environmental concerns was uh, was very important for me. So I thought that uh, why to use excess amounts of mordants if you can get a good result uh, when, when using less amounts. So then uh, I kind of uh, got interested in chemistry again from another uh, other aspect um, and then also I did my master's thesis in craft studies about dyeing with birch leaves in Finland they are a uh, traditional Finnish uh, dyeing they are a uh, very much used source of bright yellow colors so uh, I studied the effect of mordant and its amount to color and color fastness of dyed wool. And there I, I experiment that this 10% 10, 10 of the weight of the fiber alum, for example, would be uh, enough to get a, a good result for dyeing. And then um, for my uh, pH thesis. I studied fungi in the Scandinavian countries, the tradition of using uh, fungi as sources of dyes has been quite strong, mostly because in, in Finland and uh, all, all other countries in the Scandinavia, we have this uh, uh, every man's rights allows you to go in the forest and pick uh, mushrooms, berries, and and even plants if they are not rare to your your private purposes. So I studied this um, Cordinarius sanguineus. At that time, it was mostly called Thermocyp sanguinea, and um, I separated these antraquinone pigments from the mushrooms. There were like 14 different kinds of antraquinones and uh, dyed natural fibers, but also synthetic fibers with those dyes. And um, quite um, very interesting um, research. And actually in this biocolor project we are currently having, so we are still continue with these uh, colorants. And in the picture here, you can see that that uh, really different variation of colors depending on, on the fiber or, or the pure components. 
from that antraquinone mixture. Then I have I have um, worked as a lecturer at craft teacher education at the University of Helsinki, teaching, researching, and supervising uh, master's thesis and PhD thesis. And um, my interests has been in natural dyes, fungal colorants, also craft heritage. We can learn a lot, lot of uh, our past traditions, but we also need new uh, research to convert like the old recipes and old uh, working methods to to current ones so that that we don't use any harmful chemicals for example and uh, of course this sustainability is is very important in every aspect that we are doing in in our research and i have um, had this natural dyes and materials as cultural heritage and new innovations uh, a research group with uh, students over the years so this was really nice project writing this book luonnonvariaineet dyes from nature in English. So it was first published in Finnish and then translated into English. And uh, I, I was the, the kind of the leader of this project and Anja Primetta and Kirsi Niinimäki are the other writers of this book. So we, we, we focus on uh, different sources of plants, uh, algae, fungi, be used um, in a more also in a more large larger scale. So this book and um, I wrote it mostly because that time there was all, a lot of these recipe books, but kind of not uh, knowledge about the background of colorants, the properties and the technology of fibers and dyeing processes. So in this book we divide it in, in three chapters. One that introduces the sources of colorants. Second part gives some um, basic recipes uh, for fabric dyeing and printing. And then the third section introduces uh, dye, natural dye technology. And it's more, it's, it's the theoretical part of, of the phenomenon. Okay, that was kind of the, the background. So uh, I had already a lot of uh, kind, of, kind of ideas and uh, research uh, about natural dyes. And then um, there was a call for, for um, um, innovative materials launched uh, by the Academy of Finland. And uh, so uh, with uh, a few of my colleagues, we, we decided that we will take this theme, natural colorants or biocolorants as a phenomenon and, and made an application for that and um, I must say that in in a few years few last years uh, a lot of uh, 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 a big change has happened in 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 the public talk about how we uh, how we consider sustainability and like degradable materials and so on so kind of, uh, it was really, uh, uh, we thought that, that our theme fits very well to this, this call. And we, now we are in, in um, figure six. So, uh, so we, we figured out some challenges that in our opinion would, would need be considered. Like uh, that 
especially in Finland, we have a lot of forest and our uh, economy, forest economy is the biggest um, uh, um, the biggest industry in, in Finland and a lot of like uh, cellulose based uh, material, of course, paper has been produced in Finland, but nowadays the uh, the usage of paper has gone down, so lots of other other um, products has been invented from cellulose. So we have these biodegradable material innovations, but synthetic dyes are used in these items. And we thought that there is a, a contradiction uh, in terms of, of biodegradability because to, most synthetic dyes are designed to be very stable. And if the material decomposes, what happens to these dyes? It's kind of, um, uh, for us at least, it didn't um, sound very, very good equation. So uh, we thought that we need degradable dyes for degradable materials. Another thing was that uh, some synthetic dyes may be hazardous to humans and environment. There are uh, some examples. And of course, everybody knows that uh, ATSO dyes have been on, been um, uh, or, or in this discussion a lot. But uh, we also know and knew Natural origin does not does not automatically mean non toxicity or that the the dye colorant is sustainable. It could be uh, nature could provide uh, some colorants that would be taken into account when when considering alternatives for for colorants. Of course, we know that everything is colorful in our surroundings. So the usage and um, the demand for dyes and colorants is very, very big and uh, not uh, biological sources cannot uh, fulfill all that demand, but it could uh, provide some alternatives. And also, we figured out that there is um, uh, this sustainability, sustainability calls for um, material circulation and efficiency, efficiency in material utilization. So also, there are lots of potential side streams from other industries that could actually be used once again for for sources, tolerance. And uh, then finally, also since, uh, also from, from my di diverse background, I'm, I'm interested in, in people and their behavior. And I um, think that uh, production and consumption patterns are quite one-sided and based on mass production and short lifetimes of products and uh, with this uh, with my colleagues we thought that uh, we would need a shift to robustness and diversity and also uh, a new kind of thinking where for example change and aging is uh, revalued and could gain gain a new uh, new value and, and new um, kind of uh, importance and discussion about, about uh, new kind of consumption and production patterns uh, need to be uh, discussed and, and launched. So this was kind of the background of, of our, our biocolor project. And then um, collected a, a team of um, 
eight universities. Uh, this uh, uh, financing um, organization, Academy of Finland, and this call it was mainly for Finnish um, organi organizations and and research institutes. So there are then partners from Aalto University, University of Eastern Finland, North uh, Hame University of Applied Sciences, VTT, and Luke Natural Resources Institute, Finland. And then um, Professor Freeman from North Carolina State University uh, acted as my opponent in, in my PhD thesis and uh, so I sent a message to him and and he was willing to uh, participate in this project and and this was really great very nice to now work with him and his team and then uh, also uh, we contacted uh, Bru Harold uh, Freeman to Gisela Umbuzero in, in at the University of Campinas in Brazil about eco aspects and uh, very great to have also Gisela's team working in our project. So we have two international uh, research institutes in in our research group. group. Then we have also um, partners from Finland and abroad. And now it would be the number eight for you if you don't don't see mine here. So um, the aim of the biocolor project as Jenny already said, this is a, a research project for six years, so we are very happy that we don't need to do uh, research in a, in a very tight schedule, but we really have time to think about what we are doing and, and um, to, uh, to work more continuously. So we want to develop new methods for biocolorant large-scale production. Uh, we want to do uh, characterization and study applications uh, and also uh, to study consumer acceptance which would then able to build up novel processes leading to the variety of sustainable items. And we want to produce a colorful palette, human and environmentally safe natural dyes and pigments. So not only one or two or three colors but but a really a palette uh, different colors and uh, we want to collect the data in a biocolorant database covers the whole uh, production chain and and uh, integrates the knowledge that is built in our project, but also knowledge that has all be already been published in in scientific journals. And this open database will then be uh, used by by anyone, and it can be reached, of course, all over the world by researchers, crafters, and so on. Anyone who wants to find knowledge of biocolorants. And then uh, we want to have impact, not uh, just the, the scientific uh, impact, but also interaction with uh, all kinds of stakeholders from the very grassroots level to, to the uh, administrative authorities and policy makers. So of course scientific community uh, including students, associations and our, our colleagues uh, is very important and probably our first priority. Uh, then we have uh, business partners 
at the moment there are these companies you may even know some of these like uh, Marvako uh, is a printing company Nanzo makes textiles Natural Indica Finland this is a, a newly established company that is producing uh, vote in that is grown in Finland SSAB is a steel company Tulapak makes uh, degradable uh, packaging Talla is uh, uh, their products are, uh, are shoes Ula makes uh, paints and then this very is uh, a company that uh, makes dyeing they have different kind of dyeing machines uh, then we want to interact with research participating lead consumers so we will make uh, uh, surveys for consumers about color and uh, colorful packaging and so on uh, and then um, later on we want to have impact impact also on authorities and policy makers and this uh, we target with with other projects that that were financed together with our biocolor project uh, in this same call and then of course uh, we want to reach broad audience audience and and um, crafters and designers and so on and we think that uh, first hand participation personal experience and activity are are kind of the the key um, factors to get really the the change going on so um, of course we we write um, articles scientific articles public articles but we also want to um, uh, organize um, uh, exhibitions and workshops to really uh, experience hands-on uh, with these uh, sustainable materials and um, of course we want to uh, create and foster biocolorant networks and uh, uh, the conferences like this that Jenny has organized now this um, uh, biodice interface really a great place to to meet people that are interested in the topic and um, then uh, yes we have these workshops with different partners last uh, spring we had a workshop uh, for teachers home economic teachers and uh, craft teachers for they are they were like primary school teachers and there were about 100 participants in this web seminar because of this covid situation we needed to um, transfer our face-to-face -face, uh, workshop into web and first we, we were thinking oh no how this is going to to happen and uh, how we can manage it but um, as you see here this picture so the last the very bottom one is from from our our recorded uh, web uh, conference or web workshop and so we did some dyeing with with kitchen leftovers and it was very full and very very nice to to have workshop uh, next year we will have a lot of exhibitions they are in Finland in Rovaniemi Arcticum uh, next fall Jyväskylä also next fall but probably uh, we have had some discussions with the Dutch uh, design week next fall 
So if you are in the middle of Europe and the COVID situation gets better, maybe there is a possibility to, to travel and, and see the exhibition. Okay, and then of course disseminate knowledge of biocolorants and their processes. So we we kind of want to also uh, be or publish things open access so that that everybody no uh, matter where or when can access our our research results. And now um, number 10. Uh, so this um, circular thing on the right um, kind of presents our process or project and it starts with this biocolorant production. So we have um, defined our sources from agriculture, forest industry and microbes. And uh, we get some biomass, we do the extraction and we get a color extracts. They are mixtures or purified uh, compounds. And uh, till now, remember we have now only uh, carried on our research one year now. So uh, we have tested uh, wood also uh, Tanesetum, vulgare, tansi, uh, salix, uh, bark, willow, and then we have these uh, mushrooms and onion skins. So there are then different teams uh, working with these different uh, plants or isosis. Then uh, once we have got these uh, dyes, page 11, we have these toxicity teams. We have uh, the University of Eastern Finland in Kuopio. We have a team taking care of the, or focusing on the human toxicity. And then in Brazil, in Gisela's laboratory, the University of Campinas, we have uh, a team focusing on environmental toxicity of these dyes. And from these toxicity studies, we only take the ones with non-toxic uh, compounds for further applications. Uh, also, uh, then page 12, uh, in these applications, um, of course, natural colorants are, are mostly used or in a greater extent used as colorants in food and cosmetics, for example. But in our, our uh, research project, we have now focused on textile packaging and coatings. We did, did this uh, focusing because we thought that that when there is, when it concerns food colorants, there the kind of the purity and toxicity uh, aspects are are even more strict, and and um, you have to be even kind of more more careful about what you do, and also the the researchers that that were involved in the project they they were working with these applications. So it was kind of um, uh, easy to um, make a focus on aspects that are kind of outside the human body. And we have uh, teams in Finland at Aalto University Design um, School um, at the University of Helsinki Craft Teacher Education and also North Carolina State University and HAME um, University of Applied Sciences working on these applications. And uh, interesting are also these um, 
non water no water applications that we have been um, research at the North Carolina State University using carbon dioxide for dyeing. And then uh, we will do the env environmental, ethical and societal aspects of products and production and consuming biocolors and also the studies of new aesthetics. So we have a team. Oh, now I have to check out that I get this. Uh, here at the University of Helsinki and other university that, that study such aspects. And finally, we have this open biocolorant database that we are building up. And, okay, I see that the time really flies, so um, hopefully we will have some time for questions. Thank you very much for your attention and let's keep tuned. You can find our web pages from biocolor.fi and we are very happy to keep in contact with you. You. Thank you very much, Rika. In spite of all the difficulties, it's quite a lot of information. Um, there have been various web links posted on the general chat so that we can catch up um, with the slides. Unfortunately, we had a spot of bother with some people. Um, however, I'd like to say a big thank you and tell people I think the button you press is F4 or Control F4 if you're on a, a Mac. What? There we go. <laughs> Thank you very much.